Hello, I'm William Longfellow, and welcome to Let's Play Super Mario Kart. Today I'll be tackling the Flower Cup with Yoshi, another character who accelerates very quickly, although, unlike Koopa from the last video, Yoshi has a very wide turning radius. You'll notice in the last video that when I turn with Koopa, I, I'll drift, and then I'll hop to get out of the drift. And when I hop, Koopa snaps in the direction I want him to go in. Yoshi won't do that. Yoshi will instead continue to swerve to the side. And that's a difference in, in control that's useful to remember if ever you decide to uh, start playing with different characters. Whoops. And here we have a bit of a mistake. I uh, spent some time slowing down in the puddle. You'll remember in the first video that I said the general principle is to try to keep up your speed at all times. And what courses will throw at you are obstacles to attaining and, and maintaining that top speed. And the puddles in this course are one of these obstacles. Now, there are a few ways around these puddles. That's one of the trickier ways around the puddle. You can, in the first puddle, you can needle your way just to the right of the first puddle. It requires some pretty good spacing, but it's possible to do. What's a lot easier is to take the two puddles as if, uh, as you see on the southern end of the screen, the two puddles you can take as if they were an S-curve. So you, you drift to the left of the first puddle, and then you drift to the right of the second puddle. And as you come off the second puddle, you can gather enough speed to... Uh, you can drift long enough to get a speed boost. And there I got a fast start. I haven't yet discussed the fast start. Basically, if you press the accelerator at certain times as Koopa lights up his, his lights at the beginning of each race. You can uh, adjust how fast you go off the starting line, and obviously you want to go off the starting line as fast as possible, so you have to time the fast start correctly, and generally what you have to do, the timing differs depending on your situation, like if you're first or if you just lost a life, but you press the accelerator halfway in between the first and the second light. If you do it too late or too early, you'll, you'll start off quite a bit more slowly. And here we have the second Ghost Valley course, and it includes a shortcut there. I've been racing this pretty well. You'll notice that I've been racing mostly in the middle of the track. In other words, I haven't been aggressively trying to take the insides of curves or cut corners in any way. And uh, it's a bit of a conservative strategy, but it all roots down in the basic idea that I want to keep my speed as high as possible. And where are the places where I can lose speed in a Ghost Valley course? Well, there are the bottomless pits, and there are the breakable walls, and either of them can make me slow down quite a bit. So what's actually pretty good about Ghost Valley courses, especially that one and the first one, is that you have a, a reasonably wide area, a wide area with lots of straightaways, on which you can gather and keep up your speed. And as long as you keep in the middle of the course, you'll be able to keep ahead of the computers. You'll notice that I had a, a pretty good amount of distance between me and the computers behind me in the Ghost Valley course. And it's good to keep a lead. It's possible to to be racing in like fifth place throughout most of the most of the course and then burst out in the last lap, but it's it's quite a bit harder when computers are in your face. This Donut Plains course is, is a bit of a tricky one. The, the curves are, are rather tight. And that was a very bad mistake. Uh, oof. No, that was horrible. Um, yeah, don't hit the walls like I did right there. Uh, that can be, I consider hitting the walls. Uh, pretty much as, as dangerous a hazard as, as you know, falling into the lake or, or hitting a, a banana peel or something. As you can see, I lost about three or four seconds there. It can be a very bad mistake. Uh, so that's one of the obstacles that Donut Plains um, uh, offers, you could say. Throws at you, maybe. In addition, there's the grass and... Uh, oh, I got a star here. Actually, I don't like using stars very much in this game. I, sorry for changing subject so much, but I don't like using stars very much. The controls are a little bit wonky. So generally I save it for moments like, like those where I have like two straightaways at the end. 
where I don't have to control very much because it's very hard to make tight turns with a star. I like how the composer incorporated the Yoshi sound into the music. Her name is Soyo Oka. Very good composer. She did Super Mario Kart and Pilot Wings. And here, Bowser Castle 2. This course is actually quite a bit like the Ghost Valley one. You don't have any bottomless pits, though you do have some lava, and the thwomps are a bit in the middle. But if you manage to keep up your speed, as you can see, I'm already distancing myself from the computers. The computers have a bit of difficulty navigating this course. The that, uh, passage right at the end, the uh, the hopping over the lava. The computers uh, somehow miss the jumps and fall into the lava. And then they have to be picked up and they lose a, a second or so there. And that allows me to to make distance on them, even though I'm not racing particularly well. I rammed into a wall there. I didn't lose too much speed, but it's not the best I could be racing. I hit another wall there. Actually, if you hit walls, there is a way to keep up your speed. If you jump right before hitting the wall, you bounce off and continue in that direction. So it's a good way of uh, keeping things going if you hit a corner, for instance. You can, you can bump up against the corner, bounce off, and continue drift off uh, uh, through the curve properly. I'm really very far ahead of the computers. I haven't been racing particularly well in this course, but the computers have been losing a lot of time on that, that jump there. You just saw Luigi escaped from the lava. And perhaps uh, this lap we can get a glimpse of uh, Koopa and Donkey Kong Jr. having trouble. It tends to be those computers, I guess Koopa had some trouble but Donkey Kong Jr. didn't, uh, it tends to be the computers that are, are rushing. In other words, uh, the, the computers that are ahead, Koopa, Donkey Kong Jr. The slower ones don't have as much trouble with the lava. And it all goes back to the computer behavior that I mentioned a little bit in the last video. Generally, computers uh, like to keep the what I call the status quo. If Koopa is scoring ahead of Donkey Kong Jr., Koopa likes to stay ahead of Donkey Kong Jr. But there's also an element, so Koopa will, if Koopa falls behind, Koopa will rush very, very quickly to get ahead of the computers that he's supposed to be ahead of. But also, the computers like uh, that have already earned points and that are in line to score second or third place in the GP overall uh, tend to play for, for blood a little bit more than the other computers who just sort of lag behind. So they'll be racing a lot faster and sometimes they'll have trouble with uh, some of the trickier parts of courses like uh, jumping over lava or... And uh, that Bowser course isn't the only place where it happens. This course is tricky. That turn there is not the easiest one to make, but what's uh, even more difficult is the hairpin in the middle of the course. I've made it two times so far, although not with ideal turns. Generally, I actually haven't really figured out how to consistently make the hairpin turn without losing speed, without losing some speed. Generally, what I do is I let uh, go of the accelerator for a moment and then continue. That way I don't drift into the sand where I lose a lot of speed, so I, I sacrifice some speed but I'm able to keep things up for the most part. Ramming into that hairpin there, was, that was a bad error. It might cost me some, some ranks here. Let's see if I can rally myself back up to first place. Ooh, that was fun. I haven't talked about items very much. I just used a mushroom there in what I call a, a defensive item use. I, I don't know if anybody else conceives of using items this way, but generally, uh, I use items, I, I split it up into offensive and defensive use. So I'm probably going to use this mushroom offensively. In other words, as a positive thing to add to my gameplay to make myself faster. If I'm using it defensively, it's to, uh, to cancel some bad thing that happened, like hitting that banana earlier on in the course. But I'll be discussing my item strategies in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. 
and here's the celebration. I'll be quiet while you listen to the music and see Yoshi celebrate, so I hope to be seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.